travel and things in association with rugged wear, real people, real clothing, real solutions presents in conversation with. I am your host, David Batsoffen, and today I'm talking to the general managers of Meningi Lodge. That's Paul and Victoria. Ge ladies, gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to you. Morning. Morning. <laughs> How are you doing? All right, thank you. Sitting, I see you are, not me. I'm in the freezing cold here in Johannesburg. It's only 10 <laughs> degrees in Joburg. Uh, but you're on the bank of the banks of the Olifants Refer. Um, in, in the slow felt, as I believe it's referred to by the locals. <laughs> That's correct. Absolutely. <laughs> very relaxed lifestyle here. <laughs> it is indeed. I have to say that when I was at your lodge uh, not so long ago, I didn't realize how fast that Willifant's uh, refuse actually flows. Yes, that's correct. Uh, you know, it starts around um, Middleburg uh, and flows all the way through here and then into Mozambique. Um, so quite a long river, I, I believe close to 570 kilometers long. Okay. Um, funny enough, it flows from here into uh, Masangiri Dam and then mm -hmm. it changes its name from the Big Bunch River to the Elephants River because there's no Afrikaans <laughs> in Mozambique. <laughs> so, and then it flows into the Limpopo and then okay. eventually into the sea. So, so where you are, it's the Afrikaans version of the river, and then it morphs into an English river as it heads out to sea. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like when, when, you, when you live in Kloof, in, in Durban, is it Kloof or is it Kloof? I'm never certain. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kloof. Uh, Durban's very English. <laughs> <laughs> but then you've also got Waterkloof in Pretoria. And you can Victoria, let's start with you. As a general manager of yeah. this property, tell me a little bit about the property um, and what guests can expect. So we are a pretty relaxed um, run lodge. Uh, both Paul and myself are from five star backgrounds. So you know, um, the the standard of the lodge, we would set it around three star, although we haven't been graded. Um, but with our service history background, we provide guests with a high standard, but also a very relaxed atmosphere. I um, think that... We take... Sorry, you were saying? <laughs> yeah, so our guest... Um, so, so, say, caliber guests, as yeah. we say. Uh, the more relaxed uh, family type vibe. Um, it's just, yeah, we're not uh, the ones for the, the luxury side of things, but uh, we do enjoy guests from um, all backgrounds, all countries. You know, you, you say that I, um, about, about enjoying or not being necessarily um, the, the busiest or the largest of lodges. But I think that's one thing that I liked about your lodge was that it was intimate mm -hmm. and that it was just like a group of friends sitting around and chatting. There wasn't the hurly yes. burly of the large lodges where there's always something to do or somebody offering you food or something to drink. You can never really mm -hmm. relax because you're always on edge that somebody's going to come up and go, would you like a cup? <laughs> can I offer you a biscuit? And I just want to go, go away. Just leave me alone. I'm enjoying the peace and serenity here. Yeah, so it's almost like your home away from home, you know. We've got yeah. um, service facilities where you can help yourself. Obviously, if we are around, we'll um, ask if you would like anything. But uh, yeah, it's a home away from home. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what it should yeah, be. Like. Sorry, Paul, what was that? Yeah, no, no, like our motto is, you know, arrive as guests, leave as friends. And that's really what we're about. Uh, we kind of take you into our family. Um, you kind of dictate how you'd like to do things here. And mm. we go along with your, your, your plans and stuff. You know? What is the meaning of the word meningi? Meningi actually means plenty. Mm. So, um, you know, Meningi Lodge is place of plenty. That's pretty okay. much the direct translation. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So this is the view uh, when I was there, at least clear blue skies, unlike your skies behind you now, which are <laughs> grey. And I'm hoping that you don't Cloudy. get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know why I jumped immediately to food, but I seem to have an inordinate amount of food <laughs> pictures from your lodge. And as I said, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, not at all. But but I posed this question to to a chef friend of mine: bacon and egg mm -hmm. on a croissant. 
can that be seen as a breakfast of champions? Um, I think it can. He he Absolutely. argues with me because there's no artisanal bread and I don't know fresh coffee ground by by you know tall men in in only <laughs> loincloths or something. I have no idea what he's expecting. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, if there's bacon and egg or boss on a bra, I'm there. End of story. Absolutely. Paul, I know that you're not there all the time because you have a, a secondary business that you run. You do um, safaris up into Kruger, up into Mozambique. Um, talk to me about how you, you work both jobs at the same time, basically. <laughs> You need your wife. Yeah, yeah. You, you need your partner with with all with all the hassles, not only of guests who who think they're children, but of children who are children and who have to be looked after. Yeah, yeah. No, we have quite a busy schedule here. Um, so yeah, no, I've got my, my other company, Paul Safaris, where where I do guided trips into southern and east Africa, mm -hmm. and then I also am a, a trails guide in the Kruger National Park. So okay. I take. Uh, guests walking in the Kruger Park and then uh, you know coming home here this is my normal happy place where I enjoy guiding guests around here and doing walks here um, so yeah very busy but uh, you know kind of got to go where the animals are and uh, we always live in a place where there's lots of animals too. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough um, on that note uh, in, in fact you sort of have answered my question already do you take guests on walks from your property um, sort of out into the bush and show them things that they might <laughs> that they see on foot that they might not see if they're on a game drive? That's correct, yeah. Um, you know, I, we do the morning walks, three-hour morning walks um, into Belili Game Reserve where we're situated. Um, and, you know, the nice thing about walks is it's, it's not about the big five. It's not about seeing all the large animals, but uh, more the smaller stuff, you know. I think... Um, a very famous guide called Robin Pope kind of summed it up nicely and said that going on the game drive is like watching a movie while doing a bushwalk is like reading a book. It's much more about your imagination, much more about tracks and birds yeah. and plants and trees and all of that stuff. And it's, know, also, nature and yeah. it's also not about speed and distance because people go, oh, three hours in the bush, we're going to be doing like, I don't know, hundreds of kilometers and we're going to be walking like we're on a like an army recce and the answer is no you're lucky if you no. cover two kilometers in three hours because you stop every <laughs> few centimeters um that's correct to, to look and to touch and to smell and to just be and sometimes your three hours turns into four hours or five hours it just depends on what we see and how involved everyone is you know there's there's uh, being out in the bushes there's so much to see there, 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 Vicky, your your guests when they first arrive, um, and they're sort of <laughs> faced with these morning walks rather than the option of a game drive. Um, are they mm -hmm. reticent at first, or do they go, ah, oh, no, we're here to for an immersive experience, so let's just get involved. If you want us to walk, we'll walk. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bit of both. Um, obviously, having people from different backgrounds all over the globe, it's, you know, some are quite used to getting involved with nature and others are a little bit hesitant. But obviously, you know, you persuade them in the best sense that you can. <laughs> and you say, you know, <laughs> we've done several. We obviously back alive. It's all mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah. You've not and, lost um, the You just explain. Yeah, yeah, no, you just explain to them, you know, the difference between, um, obviously, the game drive and the bushwalk. Um, yeah. A lot of folks do actually just want to be on a game drive to see the bigger side of things. But uh, for those that really enjoy immersing themselves in nature, they really do partake in the walk. So, but, yes, okay. it's but for everyone. But then also, you don't even have to leave your property um, because <laughs> on the far bank, and, and I believe just before you joined me for this chat this morning, you had Wild Dog there. Um, we had yes, elephant. yeah, we still have an eye out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had elephant, we had hippo, we had water buck, we had impala, we had a, a crocodile, a whole variety of stuff um, yes. was right there. So it's almost like just a sofa safari. You can just park off and enjoy the view without leaving. 
Absolutely. We actually do call it a couch safari. Um, <laughs> so we do have several packages and one of them is um, that includes two game drives a day. And we mm. do get numerous of people that book that for four or five nights. And, you know, I do second question whether this is what they would like to do. Obviously, you know, we can swap out a game drive for a bushwalk, but I also yeah. do recommend a day or two just, you know, sitting on the lawns and enjoying the couch safari. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, being on the river is a blessing. It, it is indeed. And also people don't realize, you know, um, I do this for, for a living. So I know that I have to be up for every game drive or every book bushwalk. And <laughs> I often want to come home and say to my wife, I need a holiday. Where, where, we <laughs> where, where I don't have to be up at, at half past five every morning, you know, and, and this particular road trip that, that began at, at Meningi Lodge, I found myself napping every afternoon, which was an absolute blessing <laughs> for me. I was so grateful. I really and truly was. I, that, that, I think, was the, the other thing, is when you're not, when, when they're not like three meals a day, so there's breakfast, you go on a drive or a walk, they come back, there's breakfast. Then just as you start to relax, somebody says to you, would you like a cup of tea? Then there's lunch. <laughs> then, there's often, then there's high tea in the afternoon. Then there's afternoon game drive. So you never relax except at your place. Where you not, as I said earlier, you're not offered food constantly and consistently. You have to do your own thing. There's breakfast and there's dinner. In between, you can sort out your own snacks. It's as simple as that. And we do offer lunch, but uh, yeah. you know that's uh, some guests would prefer that. But you know, so when you get back from your game drive, it's it's already ten o'clock. Yeah. And then uh, you know, yeah. to have lunch at two o'clock, it's it's quite short. It's a bit much, yeah. 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 I think Although yeah. I wanted it's available, but um, we don't think it's always needed, and most of our guests just prefer dinner and breakfast, and they're quite yeah. happy. And game drive snacks. Yeah. Game drive snacks, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the joys of working at home. I see my cat is sitting outside my window and wants to come in. Um, so, again, <laughs> un unlike the large kitty behind me, um, a large um, orange and white cat may come and walk across my keyboard mo momentarily. Um, I know that you guys are sitting in the sun, um, and hence you might not be able to see your screen clearly, but what's up there at the moment? Now we got it. Oh, you got it. So talk us through what yep. this what this is. Sorry, uh, repeat that. Sorry. I said talk me through what people are seeing on the screen currently. Uh, it's um yeah of the the, the lodge itself. Um, okay. So yeah, where we're sitting right now, it's behind um, the rivers behind us, and then pretty much we're facing the lodge, and that's the okay. photo you're seeing on the on the screen at the moment. So yeah. So looking at the looking at the lodge, uh, looking at this image on the right hand side of the image is the larpa, and there's also a mm -hmm. swimming pool there. Uh, I don't know if people yes. are swimming in this weather, but it's there if they want it. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> it is there, yeah. In summer, it's great. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the river is full of crocs <laughs> and hippos. So uh, we have had a few guests ask us if they could swim in the river, and it's a definite no. <laughs> but we do provide a, a small splash pool to uh, cool down in the hot summer days. Does so, it not also depend on the guest, Paul? If you don't like them, then you say, of course you can swim in the river. <laughs> Why not? No. <laughs> we don't often get very... Uh, unruly guests. Unruly guests, yeah. <laughs> and and so. Um, so in the middle is, is the kitchen. Um, and mm -hmm. on the left... And the bar. Are, and the bar. And then on the left are um, two of the rooms that you use for accommodation for guests. Right. Yes, yeah, we call them our river view rooms because obviously they'll be looking straight out onto the oily funds. All right, and then the, the room that I started off this presentation with is around the back. It's a very quiet room. Uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. face the river, but it does give you um, a little bit of separation, if that's what you want, from the mm -hmm. rest a of the A bit of privacy, yes. A bit of privacy, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. And then one of my favorite areas is, is, is this. I love your kitchen. It is so retro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, specifically uh, designed to avoid the floods. <laughs> yeah, we, are we, guests allowed to utilize the kitchen? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So we do also do self catering on request. Right. And they just make themselves at home in our retro kitchen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, now you say there is an option of self-catering. What is the other option? So we've got uh, self-catering, dinner, bed and breakfast, and then our all-inclusive rates. And okay. we normally do exclusive use on the self-catering. Um, obviously, you know, if it's like during COVID, we obviously catered to the South Africans who just like to go away and do their own thing. So we did open up self-catering and it worked quite well. Um, but yeah, the demand has died down slightly. So we do that on an exclusive use option. Okay, that's, that, that's fair enough. Because I, I have news for, for guests who may be thinking of visiting you. Yes, self-catered mm -hmm. self by all, by, for, to your heart's content. But the moment you see this <laughs> food, you're going to go, damn, I wish I'd, I'd gone for the other package. <laughs> <laughs> when is the best time to visit you guys? Or is there a best time? I mean, this guy's think, there I constantly. Think... This is not one of the yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, they part of the furniture here. So um, I think it depends what you want out of it. Uh, you know, in December, January, it's kind of a, when we say wet season, we have often thunder showers and the bush gets lovely, lush and green. Mm -hmm. A lot of baby animals around. Uh, all of your migrant birds are back. So that's a really great time. Um, August, September, it's our dry season, so the bush isn't so pretty, but you tend to have better game viewing along the river. Yeah. Uh, there's no water in the bush itself, so most of your animals come down to um, the river. But in saying that, all year is a great time. You know, we, we see stuff all year around. This last week, we've had quite a lot of lions around. Um, leopards. A leopards across the river for about two hours the other day, just... Thank you, I'm um, And then, yeah, two weeks ago, one on the lawn. Mm. So, yeah. You're so, kidding. Yeah. yeah, no, it was fantastic. We yeah. heard the bushbuck alarm calling and we mm -hmm. it was in the evening. So we shone the torch and just coming from our neighbor's lawn, he was walking up our road. So it was amazing. Yeah. You see, that, that's the thing about the bush, the beauty about it. And the, both the good and the bad is you can miss a sighting by one minute, by one day, Absolutely. by one second. <laughs> As somebody said to me at another camp, the, the best game sightings are always the day before you arrive and the day after the day you, you drive out. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. it, it happened on that particular occasion that we hadn't seen leopard. Well, we had, we'd had a brief sighting of a leopard. We left, my wife and I, to, to move on to our next camp. And they got a leopard with a kill the following morning. And, oh, and he oh. sent me photographs. And with his oh, permission, no. I, I used them in my, in my blog to say, you see, it is true. Best sightings are. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the beauty about shows is you, you just never know what, you know, you no. can be singing and have a very quiet day, see nothing, and then the next minute there's lions hunting on the lawn. You know? Very it's, unpredictable. Yeah, uh, it, it, so is very, yeah. the, the only thing yeah. I think we can predict is the sunrises and sunsets in the low felt, which are Ooh. absolutely spectacular. They really and truly are. Yeah, we get, uh, we, we're one of the, the beauties about our jobs is we get to see every single sunrise and sunset, you know, <laughs> yeah. up, uh, before the sun rises. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the last two days we haven't seen any. It's been a bit overcast and uh, uh, cloudy here uh, and uh, a bit of rain, but uh, looks like the sun's back now. So we should see one this afternoon or sunset. That That's great. And specifically with the cloud cover, because that's what makes the sunset so special. Um, question, question to both or either of you. How do people get hold of you? Um, how do they book? So on our website um, would be the best way and the easiest way. Um, and that's www.maninghi.co.za uh, would probably be about the best way. Um, or on our Facebook page, Meningi Lodge. Great stuff. Uh, you can also contact us through that, yeah. Is there anything that I've forgotten? that you would like to mention? Because I don't know everything think, about uh, your lodge. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we offer quite a lot of activities from guided walks as we discussed in game drives uh, to Kruger Park day trips, uh, panoramic day trips. And then one of the things that we do that not many people do is a four by four trip up to the top of Marutskop Mountain. Oh, wow. Which is the tallest peak oh, wow. uh, in the Northern Drakensberg. 
Mm -hmm. um, and that's a full day up. Um, Reef's Corp's quite amazing. It's three biomes. You've got Savannah at the bottom, Montane, Rainforest, a forest halfway up, and then Fainbos right at the top. <laughs> it actually looks like Table Mountain right on the top. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, and then we do a trip down into the Blyther River for a swim and a uh, picnic, picnic lunch. Oh, <laughs> <and wow. feed. laughs> so that's another one that's uh, a really popular tour. Great stuff. Um, and all right, of that is um, on your website. Absolutely, sure. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, it's a really good place, as you said, to come and uh, relax, enjoy the view um, with some friends. And then, yeah, we will always be around to host you, chat to you, tell you stories and all of that. <laughs> and if you don't have feed stories, you. you'll make them. <laughs> <laughs> <I> feed you. <laughs> <laughs> and feed me. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, Christy, they, uh, Vic, Vicky, thank you so very much for chatting with me. Wish you guys all the very best. Meningi Lodge. Look them up online, look them up on Facebook um, and book. You will not be sorry. Really and truly. <laughs> Thanks very much, Thanks David. Very it was much, a pleasure. <laughs> Pity I missed you while I was walking in the Kruger, but uh, thanks very much again and uh, good chatting to you. We'll time we'll the next visit soon. better. All right. Cheers yeah. for now. <laughs> Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.